Hey, welcome to another Gourmet Fishing Info Short. I'm your host, David Murray. On today's show, we are going to create what, I, what I'm what i calling this little dish a poor man's crab cake. So instead of crab, we're going to use sheep's head fillets and pair that up with a scallop mousse and bring it all together, and it's going to be awesome. But before we can get our faux crab cake out to our planetary population well we do have just a little bit of business to take care of so why don't we get the show started by rolling the open Let's get started on our poor man's crab cake. Now, you know, crab meat can get a little pricey at times and uh, hopefully uh, you've got some sheep's head fillets in, in, your, in your freezer or you've been out doing a little fishing. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be sheep's head. Hey, dolphin works perfect with this. Um, you, can, you could use cod if you wanted to. You know, you're looking for kind of a, kind of a delicate meat to go along with all our other ingredients and our ingredients are right here we've got uh, three stalks of celery that we've uh we've, we've grated we have half of a sweet onion that we've grated we're gonna have we're only gonna use one of the eggs we've got uh so a, a tablespoon of dijon mustard we've got two tablespoons of sour cream some hot sauce some cayenne pepper some scallops which is coming up and here is our um uh, I've got about 10 ounces of sheep's head fillets, and what I've done is I've diced those up. We'll get to that in a second. I'll show you exactly how I actually did that. And we've got some breadcrumbs over here. We've got a little bit of fresh thyme, and we also are going to be using a little bit of heavy cream. So, speaking of cream, what we're going to do, we're going to take that cream and our scallops. We're going to create a kind of, kind of a scallop move. It's not a true full mousse, but we, what we're going to do is we're going to pulse seize in our um um what was this yes a food processor which we can go ahead and do so we're going to add these scallops and by the way these this is about three and a half to four ounces of scallops these are our standard um just standard scallops i usually like to use the base scallops which is the little teeny ones but anyway uh didn't have those so i had these so i'm using that and uh if, if you don't I uh, use a food processor don't have one you can chop these up the same way as we chopped up our um, our fillets so anyway that being said I'm gonna add my scallops to a little food processor get it on the right way and we're just gonna pulse this a couple of times just like that now we're gonna come in we're gonna grab some cream just like that, I'm using a 40% uh, a 40% heavy cream, and I'm going to add probably uh, about a tablespoon of that cream, just like that. Not too tough. So we'll come back. We're going to add our top back to this. Make sure everything's working, and then we're going to pulse it. Just like so, and that is it that is our uh scallop mousse we'll call it that anyway <laughs> so that's it now here you know it's gonna it's uh it, what that's gonna do is also gonna add some great flavor but it's gonna help pull all of our other flavors and ingredients together um so let's go ahead and get started with some of this you know i tell you what i'm gonna put this here and we're gonna talk about uh, what I did with our um, sheep's head fillets. I got a little small piece right here. And what, what I did is I came in and just made little small cuts. Just like this. Okay. Then we came in and we did 
a cross cut just like that and we're creating little teeny small pieces of deliciousness now <laughs> at this point I kind of got everything together and just gave it a couple of chops like that rotated around and came back and did it the same way this way okay that that's it and you can do the same thing with your scallops if you don't um, if you don't use or have a uh, food processor and of course if, if you if you don't have the food processor and you chop them up you don't you don't <laughs> you don't need the cream at all so anyway ooh, let's get, some, get back in there just like that okay I think I'll leave you right there now let's get into bringing our faux crab cake together so we're gonna come in I tell you what drop our fillets in just like so Put you over here now we're gonna come in here and get our scallop mousse out I probably should have used a smaller spatula but didn't so here we go just like that okay I want to get all that good out of there heck yeah man don't want to leave any of that that's some good stuff you could spice that up put it in a piping bag I don't know put it in a um and a uh some some mushrooms bake them have a little scallop mousse mushroom after uh, anyway maybe that's something we'll <laughs> we'll take a look at down the road so we've got our our uh, scallop mousse we have our chopped up um fillets now we're going to come in with our um celery grated celery here is our half of our uh, grated sweet onion let's see here we go now we're going to come in here and this is our dijon mustard yeah this is the one i should have used for the uh for the scallop mousse but didn't now we've got two tablespoons of sour cream now you may be saying hey man i've, I've made crab cakes before i always use mayonnaise well that's that's good you can use mayonnaise i'm not a mayonnaise fan so i anytime as a rule that i've got a recipe that calls for mayonnaise i usually replace it with uh, sour cream sometimes you can't do that but anyway i do so okay now right here we've got we're going to bring a little bit of heat into this that is about a half a teaspoon of our cayenne pepper and then we've got uh two teaspoons of hot sauce the hot pluff mud sauce anyway <laughs> there we are so now we're going to come in here and add an egg just like like so now we need to come in and you know what i forgot to mention is we need a lemon to add some of that great uh, citrus uh flavor to our crab cakes now before i cut that I'm going to come in and I'm going to take a little bit of the zest off of our lemon and we're going to add that in there to that not a lot just a tad now we're going to come in with our uh, lemon and we're going to take a couple of small cuts on the side put you right here and we're going to look for about a teaspoon or so of lemon juice just like that and what's neat is when you cut it when you cut this thing on the side like this you kind of bypass getting those seeds now you know of course there's some you're going to leave a little bit <laughs> of a good lemon flavor and lemon juice in here but um you know when you're looking to do a little bit cut it just on the side just and you can see that right there just like that see and you as a rule won't have any issues with the seeds now we're going to come in with our uh, larger spatula like so and we're going to combine everything together just like so i'm going to get that egg busted up here we go just like that and you can see all those little small pieces of uh, sheep's head fillets in there uh you can't really see the scallops but i'm sure they're in there especially when you when you start eating this thing so get this combined it's not the most appetizing looking uh, concoction we got in here but it is I promise so we can do this okay now at this point as I sling our stuff around we're gonna come in and add about a half a teaspoon quarter teaspoon of fresh thyme come in here I'm just gonna 
kind of squeeze that between my uh, my hands, kind of release those oils. And basically, to just took some of our um, thyme uh, stalks and we just pulled the leaves right off there, just like that. So here we are as I throw that on the ground. Okay, we're gonna combine this together, and that thyme's gonna add just a little nice, good earthiness, earthy flavor to it, just like so. Oh yeah, smelling good. Now at this point, we can't do anything with that, can we? We could make <laughs> make some plaster maybe. So that's where our breadcrumbs come into play. And I'm using the panko breadcrumbs. That's like Japanese um, breadcrumbs. They do a little bit better uh, feel to them. And they just seem to work better for me than regular, uh, you know, everyday breadcrumbs. But you can make your own breadcrumbs. If you got a, some older bread, Turn the oven on about 175, toss it in there, let all the uh, liquid come out, and then you can crunch them up uh, either in a Ziploc bag with your hands or in the um, food processor. Now I'm gonna start out with about a half cup of, of breadcrumbs, just like this. You wanna use least amount as possible. And what we're trying to do with these breadcrumbs is to bring everything together so we can actually create little cake and it won't fall apart kind of like when you're making hamburgers so here we go yeah it's that that came together pretty good i think i'm gonna have to add a little bit more just like that let's see yeah we're gonna have to add just a little bit okay you know what that's close to three quarter cups i believe there we are so again we're just gonna come in and bring these together i think that's gonna be good just like so all right i think that's gonna work out for us right here yes it's kind of it has definitely come together i added just a little bit more so we've got about about a cup of of breadcrumbs in our uh, uh cake mixture and that's gonna i think that's gonna come together well oh yeah definitely definitely so why don't we go ahead and mix our mix make our uh, crab cakes or our um Poor man's crab cake. That's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to grab a plate like so, just like this. And you should be able to, oh, <laughs> depends on what size crab cakes. I like them about this big around, nice and thick. So you actually, you make these a meal, but you could make little small ones for, um, for, for um, appetizers if you wanted to. But I'm going to take a, about a handful, just like that. Of course, I got, I don't have the biggest hands in the world. <laughs> so anyway so we can just come in here and we're just gonna make our our cakes just like that voila okay now i think yeah we're gonna probably wind up with just about four of these just like so a little bit more okay and i am making a mess so anyway here we go. just like this okay there's another one and then yep that's exactly what we'll do we'll make four only gonna cook two though. <laughs> so here we go. All right, there we go. We now have four beautiful crab cakes. Got a case of a messy hand, but I tell you what, you know, um, you can definitely um, turn these things into little, small, you know, uh, 50 cent piece sizes or or size of about this right here uh, for for hors d'oeuvres. You know, little little snacks. Man, they're awesome. Like Tell you what, let's clean this up just a tad. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna let these set for, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes so everything kind of sort of comes together and uh, that bread actually will begin to um, really do its little magic and really hold those together and make them a little more hearty than if we put them right now in the pan. All right, so while our uh, crab cakes or our uh, poor man's crab cake, faux crab cake, uh, scallops, and sheep's head cakes are resting and kind of sort of tighten themselves up before we put them in the pan. Should go ahead and turn your oven on, preheat that to 350 degrees because we're going to sear our crab cakes and then finish them off down here in the oven. So while the uh, cakes are resting, let's make our cream sauce. Now we've got two cream sa sauces. We're going to make a wasabi cream sauce and a horseradish cream sauce. Now what I've got here, I've got two two paste uh, that we made with um, powdered wasabi and water. And right here is our powdered horseradish. 
and and water and uh, as you can see it comes in a little bag you can get whatever size you want and this is the plain um, horseradish wasabi uh, the same thing you can uh, you can get the uh, big containers small containers or you can buy the wasabi paste uh, at your supermarket but anyway let's make our paste right here I've got one tablespoon of um, cold water and one tablespoon of our powder so you want equal parts of water to your powder come in here with that add it let's see here we go now we're gonna come in and just bring this whole thing together just like so and it's gonna make a nice little paste and now you don't want to just go ahead and use it <laughs> after you mix it what you need to do is let this thing set and this is for both of them, your wasabi and your um, horseradish you need to let it sit for about 10 at least 10 minutes I'd say so all those flavors all the the little uh, hidden heat <laughs> that is inherent with uh, with wasabi and the horseradish are pulled out and if you ever use uh, like uh, the dry mustards for um, I don't know like a corned beef and cabbage or some type of a dish like that same thing uh, equal parts of the dry mustard equal parts of the water and you got to let it set for about uh, 10 minutes that's kind of the magic number for this stuff so tell you what we've got this so so we've we, we kind of planned ahead we've got everything we need so we're gonna put that we're gonna let that rest and sit for about 10 minutes now I'm gonna come in here with a bowl and we're gonna make our um, what are we gonna make let's make we'll make the um, horseradish sauce how's that so we need to come in with our let me rinse this off spatula just like so and we're gonna add our horseradish paste to a little bowl no biggie now I'm gonna come in with some sour cream which I need to grab out of the fridge just like so and we're gonna use a half cup of sour cream just like so let's see you know what that looks pretty good to me so we're going to bring that that in like so we'll sit here and we'll get all the good out of our measuring cup just like that okay so we've got our sour cream and we have our um horseradish paste okay that there almost there now I'm gonna come in and we're gonna add a little bit of um, super fine sugar like uh, super why not just right one the neat thing about super fine is well it's 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 been ground a lot more than our regular sugar so it will dissolve quicker than regular sugar now you can also if you want use um, use honey or agave nectar something like that so we're gonna bring we're gonna mix this thing together just like so all right we're gonna bring this together just like that I'm gonna get this mixed about halfway and then we're gonna come back in we're gonna need about a teaspoon or so of um, our lemon juice just like that now there was a little little seed got in there we'll take care of that real quick I think we will yep got him okay there we are so now <laughs> it's not perfect you know trying to cut it and make it work anyway so here we go now we're gonna come in and we're going to mix this up just like so not hard not too tough now I'm going to move to the whisk which is makes everything a little easier to go and I wanted to use the the spatula to get the, the lemon juice kind of sort of in there before I got into the whisk because if uh, if not that lemon juice can can get away from you if you're not careful so there it is that's our horseradish cream sauce and you know a lot of these things I try to do are not too terribly difficult so there it is now we're gonna again let this sit for probably three or four minutes by itself and then we're gonna transfer it to a squeeze bottle so it'll be easier for us to add it to our plate all right we've got our cream sauces made created in our little squirt bottles right here we got the wasabi and we've got the horseradish cream sauce now it's time for what you're waiting for and that is to cook our sheep's head and scallop cakes our poor man's crab cake our faux 
cake, whatever we want to call it. All I know is it's going to be delicious. Now we've got, um, I've got an oven, uh, oven safe spatula. When I say that, it's got a uh, metal handle so we can slide it into the oven to finish the cooking. Now, come in here with a little bit of oil, just like so. And I'm going to swirl it around. Now, of course, this is a non-stick, so it's not going to, oh, anyway. You still sometimes have to oil a non-stick. So we're going to come in with our crab cake. See how they've kind of uh, 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 hardened up, I guess you could say. Uh, that bread has, has done what it's supposed to do. I'm going to come in and add that. Kind of move that around. Make sure it's not sticking. Let's see. We'll go with, uh, with this one right here. Oh, yeah. Just like that. And do the same thing. Move it around just a tad. And what we're trying to do is to get a nice little sear, a little uh, a little crust on the outside, on both sides. And then we're going to finish that off in the oven uh, probably about 10 minutes. Uh, and that, they'll be ready to eat. So, you know, it, this is not uh, a, a extremely hard uh, recipe. It really isn't. You know, you, you got to just mince up your uh, sheep's head. Uh, you got to either mince up your uh, scallops or make a mousse of your scallops. Grate your uh, celery, your onions. You know, I mean, you know, boom, it's fairly quickly. And, you know, you really just have to let your crab cakes uh, rest for just a little bit. So that bread um, really becomes hydrated and, and binds everything together. So let's see here. Let's take a look and see what we got going on on the bottom here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just almost there. Now, I've got this on probably a medium high. I'm going to turn that down just a tad. Um, but everything seems to be moving the way it should. Uh, you know, we can come in here and we can add just a little bit of salt. But, you know, you can take care of that um, after, after the cooking, uh, you know, because we, what we've got in here, uh, you know, we've got salty fish. So I'm going to move that off the heat and we're going to come over here. Oh, yeah, check that out. And give it a flip. Just like so. Man, I tell you what, it's going to be very, very, very delicious here in a few minutes. And that's what we're trying to do. Get, get just a nice little crust on the outside. And we'll, we'll, we're kicking that cooking process off because the heat, um, you know, heck, as we flip it, it's still cooking top side down. So, and that's, uh, that's what we're looking to do. Move that away just like so. All right, there we are. We are perfect and we are good to go in the oven just like so. Put it in the oven. It's at 350 degrees and we've got about 10 minutes <laughs> and then it will be time to plate and eat. All right, time's up. 10 minutes. Let's get our crab cakes out of the oven and on our plate. Oh, check that out. Oh, yes, sir. Re, you can feel that. That's up. They're nice and tight, which is kind of what we need. They, 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 won't, they, they will not be dry. I promise you that because of all the goodies we've got in there. Now, since we've taken this out, um, that doesn't mean that that handle magically is not hot anymore. Believe me, I, I've learned my lesson. So I always leave a towel or, or something on there because I've done that without anyway. So anyway, let's go ahead and get, get ourselves plated up here. Now I'm going to come in with our uh, wasabi cream sauce. And let's see here. I'm going to do this over the sink. And we're going to give us just a nice little decoration. Just like so. Nothing. See, how about that? It looks pretty good. Nothing magical about it. We're going to come in here with one crab cake. Just like so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfectly cooked. Just what we need that is another oh man okay you out of the way stay away from me so i don't get hurt but you up what can we do i tell you what i'm going to come in with our regular horseradish cream sauce and just you know not a lot you can always have extra then i'm going to come in here with with a little piece of lime slice kind of in the shape of a figure eight just like so Come in here with another, do the same thing. Just try to make it look ah, delicious, just like that. How about that, man? Oh, and that, is, that just looks awesome. I can't, I can't wait to try it here in a few minutes. You know, we can come in here if we want with a, you know, a lemon wedge here, lemon slice, uh, you know, it could be another. Let's see, you get out of here like so if you want. And then maybe a couple of little limes over here. I don't know, whatever. 
you know, get creative. Nah, that doesn't look good. Anyway, that'll work. But there it is, y'all. Oh, quick, simple, easy. This is our poor man's crab cake made with sheep's head fillets and scallops. It's all I can tell you is it tastes fabulous. And you, truthfully, with that sheep's head, it is kind of hard to tell that that's not crab. You know, out there in the in the world of of, of Mother Nature, you are what you eat. Sheep said, my goodness, they eat shrimp, they eat crabs, uh, they, you know, they love the little oysters and barnacles and so forth. So, you know, that's kind of sort of all in their makeup and they're delicious. Give them a, give them a shot. You know, we've got a couple of shows coming up here uh, that we're actually going to be uh, fishing for them and we'll probably <laughs> repurpose this segment. But anyway, I tell you what, don't, please don't forget to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Click that little notification button bell so you know exactly when we upload anything new to the channel hey check us out on facebook and instagram instagram as i'm sure you know by now we've got two t's in gourmet it's one of the one of those things that just you know happened and we had to had to deal with it uh also gourmetfishing.com you can uh, get all of our recipes uh, all of our videos they're all there for you to download and and use uh cooking fishing boating it's all out there. Hope you enjoy it. We also have uh, our own store now. Yeah, you can go out there and get shirts. You can get our Pluff Mud uh, sauces uh, apparel. Sauces aren't out quite there yet, but they are definitely on their way. But I tell you what, please give us a shot. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, let me know uh, in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And I tell you what, until next time, God bless and, well, we'll see you soon. And three. All right. <clears throat> Everything good i think okay yes oh yeah check that out remember a couple of times i'd i'd say hey you know, gotta be careful that uh that grill right here well, i tell you what when we were doing our surfing turf <laughs> it got me anyway okay all right so um all right rock and roll rock and roll all right.